In today's video, we're gonna to tour my 2020 Winnebago Travato 59KL National Park Edition. Come on. What is going on YouTube? Greetings from just south of St. Louis, Missouri. I'm still in Missouri. I haven't taken my Travato on a big trip yet because I'm waiting to get my tags. As soon as I get my tags, I'm gonna head west towards the mountains, I need cooler weather. It's really, really hot here in Missouri. Okay, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into this tour. Okay, so like I mentioned, this is a 2020 Winnebago Travato. It's built on a 2019 Dodge Ram 3500 chassis. All right, let's go ahead and start with the roof here. Okay, so we have this huge solar panel here, and we have another one on the other side of the roof for a total of 250 watts on the roof. I also have a portable ZAMP solar panel that adds 140 watts, so just under 400 total. Next, we have the WeBoost antenna. It helps me pick up cell phone signals that are far away. And then we have this vent and another vent up here, one's for the black tank and one's for the gray tank. Over here in the middle is my awesome Coleman Mach 10 air conditioner that I'll talk about a little later. So this is a nice little touch that Winnebago added. There's actually a hole in the roof here and this little plastic box was put over it. So if I decide to add anything, all I have to do is poke a hole in this plastic. And last, we have the smaller solar panel I mentioned as well as two antennas, one for the TV and one for satellite radio. And then finally, my Max air fan. All right, now let's check out all the features on the outside of the coach. Okay, so we're gonna start with the driver's side. So there's this cool graphics package on the National Park Edition. It doesn't do anything for performance, but it kind of co looks pretty cool. Uh, these are supposed to represent birds. Um, next, there's a 13 gallon blackwater tank on this rig, so kind of small, so I gotta be careful. How often I use the toilet, and then if I'm in a wooded area like this, I'm gonna use it outside. But when I go to clean out my black tank, here is the black water tank flush, and down here is the black water tank pipe. And on the side here are the black water and gray water release valves. If you didn't watch my video about the first 48 hours in this rig, there's a real funny scene where I'm trying to dump the black tank for the first time. So you should go check that out. I'll link that up here somewhere. Okay, down here we got the alloy rims and the BF Goodwrench All-Terrain TA KO2 tires. These don't normally come on the Travato, but the National Park Edition came standard with them. These are the same tires that are on the Winnebago Revel if you're familiar with the Revel. All right, so over here we got the Truma Combi vent. The Truma Combi is how I heat the coach and how I heat water. You can use gas or electric to heat the coach or heat the water, or you can use a combination of both. So it's really cool to have that flexibility. So right over here is my tank fill to fill up my freshwater tank. And here's my city fill when I'm at a RV park where I can just hook a line directly in. The gray water tank is also 13 gallons. So I mentioned earlier that I can heat my coach and water with propane. This is where you fill that up at. If I wanna plug my coach into 30 amp power, this is where I would do it. This is actually really cool because when you're plugged in, a little blue light comes on letting you know you're plugged in. So that's pretty neat. And this right here is a little cable in, so if they have cable TV at a campground, I could plug it in there, I guess, and watch cable. I forgot to mention this guy right here. This is where you can store the factory stinky slinky. So for those that don't know, it's what you use to uh, dump your black tank. I've never used it before. That's why I'm touching it without gloves. Um, I bought an aftermarket one that was a little bit more robust. Although I hear this one works fine, so maybe I shouldn't have done that. On the driver's side, there's this little step here. On the other side of the coach, I'll show you there's a big long step. So there really isn't a whole lot to show in the front of the coach. It's just your standard Ram ProMaster 3500. The only thing that's really cool are these mirrors. There are two mirrors and you can adjust them all from inside and you can fold the mirrors in as well if you're in like a tight parking spot. Okay, now we're moving on to probably my favorite part of the van. As you saw earlier, there is a ladder on the back. That's not a must have, but it's pretty cool to have. And what makes this ladder really cool is you can detach it and put it on almost any part of the van so you can get up to that part of the roof. 
if you need to take something down, if you need to get up there and clean the solar panels, whatever it is, uh, it's just kind of a really cool thing to have. This right here is another cool feature. It's a bike rack, it holds two bikes. I don't have a bike yet, but I'm gonna get one soon for sure, because I definitely wanna go mountain bike riding when I head to the mountains pretty soon. Okay, so we have a couple cool things down here in the back. We have a tow hitch so I can tow around 5,000 pounds or hold about 250 pounds. I mentioned propane earlier. There's a propane valve back here so I can hook up an outdoor grill and grill using propane on the back of my rig. So that's pretty cool. All right, so let's go ahead and open this thing up. All right, so first thing I'll point out are these window shades. They're magnetic and I usually keep them on when I'm in here because as you can see, my bathroom is in here. Right now I have this bug screen attached so you can't really see the bathroom too well, but you'll see more of it when we go inside. But the toilet is right here if you cannot see it. So that's why there's this toilet paper roll right here. And it's really cool because it actually rolls the toilet paper back up and so you can protect the toilet paper from the water. This is also a wet bath in here, so I can take a shower in here. I'm not sure how often I'll do that inside the rig. I'll probably just set something up out here because the nozzle will actually come out here. And so I can just shower right here, which for me is more ideal. I won't fill up my gray and black tank as much, and it just makes more sense for me. Up here is a towel rag, which is kind of cool. The rig also came with all these little magnets for hooking up the shower curtain, but I've been using them for putting up like towels and things like that, they're great. That's one little pro tip, get a bunch of magnets, you can hang a bunch of stuff up with magnets. So over here is what I would call my gear locker. It's kind of a work in progress, I'm still trying to figure it out, but I've hung up a couple things. I have my black hose, that's for my black water flush, and then I have a separate hose, which is blue for any fresh water. I also have an RV water filter here. There's one built into the rig, but I think the more you can filter water, the better. So I have that here. And it also has a pressure valve regulator hooked up here. For those that don't know, a lot of times hoses have really, really high pressure and you can bust out your pipes in your RV. So you always wanna get one of these little um, pressure regulators here so you don't bust out pipes. There's also a light up here, and there's actually three of these lights. There's this one, and there's one on this side of the coach, and one on that side of the coach. I didn't turn it on earlier, but you turn that one on over there from down here. Okay, so down here we got a couple of bits and bobs. There is an outdoor water spigot right here, so if I wanna spray something down, I can hook this up. I can also turn the water pump on and off right here. There's another switch inside as well, so I just kind of leave it on. I don't really need to mess with this one. And like I mentioned before, this switch right here turns on the side light. It took me a while to figure that out, actually. That side light was on, and I couldn't figure out for the life of me how to turn it off, and then finally I discovered that it was back here. They should really label this thing. As I mentioned before, this little switch right here turns the light up there on and off. And this right here is a 12 volt outlet uh, for outside. There's also 120 plugs. This right here, my mom swears by these things. I don't know if they work, but they're supposed to keep pests away um, from an area. So I've put a few of these into my RV. They take hardly any power and you know, why not? Inside this bag, if you watched my other video called My First 48 Hours in the RV, which I'll link again up here somewhere, um, is all my black tank stuff. So my Rhino hose, uh, all the um, bits and bobs that are associated with um, emptying your black tank are in this duffel bag here. So that's where I store that right now. So that's what I've got back here right now. Let's take a look at the other side. All right, so there's not much to this part of the van to be completely honest with you. We've got these speakers up here so you can broadcast the stereo that's inside, which I will show you out here. And you also have this light up here, which I showed you earlier. And we have this awning and this rail here. So 
The cool thing about this rail and this awning is they both have lights. So I'll show you those real quick here. If you're enjoying this video, please hit that thumbs up button and leave a comment below telling me where you're watching from. The YouTube algorithm will show this video to more people, the more thumbs up and the more comments I have. So I appreciate you doing that. Also, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of my weekly videos. So you can't really see the lights, but there are LED lights up here that are pretty bright at night and there's LED lights down here. What's cool about this awning is Obviously it doesn't have like, bar, it doesn't need bars that go along the side of the rig. So there's nothing I need to do but press a button. So that's really cool. So the second thing that's really cool about this awning is it has wind sensitivity. So if the wind picks up, you don't want your awning to get ruined and maybe you're out walking the dog or just doing something. Um, this thing will automatically retract. So let me see if I can show you that here. There we go. So that kind of simulated some wind. So now my RV realizes my awning's in trouble. And so it's gonna retract that awning in so I don't have to worry about it getting messed up by the wind. So that's a pretty cool feature uh, of this RV. The last thing I'll show you here now that we have the door open is this Rolef screen. The Travados used to come with a screen door that pulled out like this and some people like them, but a lot of people don't uh, for a couple different reasons. Number one, they would kind of get stuck sometimes and wear out. And second, when you open them, bugs can just fly in. So this Rolef screen is a little bit more functional when it comes to keeping bugs out. And what I mean by that is you don't have to unzip anything and zip it back up. It's all magnetic and it just flops back into place um, and stay shut and keeps the bugs out. Obviously when you first open it, bugs can get in, but it's not like the screens where you push them and you just leave it wide open while you get in and while you're shutting it. It's pretty uh, quick. You can also roll it up if you want it out of the way. I'm just gonna keep it on here. Uh, it works for me and it's done a great job keeping the bugs out. Okay, let's go ahead and go inside and I'll show you the inside of my rig. Welcome to my crib. If you're old enough to get that reference, type down below in the comments what station that's from and what the name of the show was. All right, so let me show you around my place. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and start off with the front of the coach. So one of the really cool features of this Ram Pro Master are these leather seats that completely rotate around and provide extra seating and a couple extra workstations. So my favorite workstation is actually this one. A little cutting board comes out over here and I can set my computer on here. And the reason I like this one is because my elbow sits on this Corian countertop and it's just more comfortable for me for whatever reason. Most people like this one over here better. Um, this is where I actually eat and sometimes I work on my computer over here too. So this one comes out and you have another workstation and this chair can rotate. All right, so the dash is your typical Ram ProMaster dash. One of the cool things about this unit is it came with a one year subscription to Sirius XM. I didn't think I was gonna be a fan, to be honest with you. I was like, I got my Spotify, I love it, but I've really enjoyed Sirius XM. The radio stations on Sirius XM are great, so I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to give this up after my one year free membership. Above my head here is also some storage. This is where I keep my solar panel, my 30 amp hookup, and a bunch of other odds and ends. Okay, so the last really cool thing about the front of the coach is this privacy screen that's already installed. I don't need to mess with any kind of foldable thing or anything like that. I don't need to find a place to store it. It just stores right here. Okay, that's the front of the coach. Let's move on to the kitchen. Okay, so one of the coolest parts of the coach for me is this kitchen. For those who have been watching my channel, you know I don't cook much, but I plan on learning to cook now that I have this kind of cool little kitchen. So it comes with just about everything any other kitchen would come with. There's a sink and a faucet that works. 
There's a, this is a dish drying tray that hangs on here. So that's a pretty cool design. Uh, then I have a little propane operated stove here. That's pretty cool. I have my Keurig. I'm a huge coffee drinker. So I definitely have to have that. And then there is a refrigerator down here. That's much, much deeper than you think and holds a lot more than probably I'm gonna need. And last is this microwave that is also a convection oven. So it serves two purposes. I can microwave stuff in it and I can bake stuff in it. So that's pretty cool. Okay, let's move on to the bedroom. Okay, so let's start up top first. For those that don't know, before I became a lawyer and before I became a travel vlogger, I was in the US Navy for 20 years. And so I really like these cabinets. They remind me of sailboat cabinets. They have this little button that keeps them locked in place when you're moving, but you can keep them unlocked when you're not moving. For those that haven't been watching me for a while, I'm a minimalist traveler. I spent the entire year last year traveling around the world with just one carry-on backpack. And I've kind of replicated that and carried it into the rig. So right now I'm only storing clothes in two spots, in this little overhead bin and in the closet back here in the bathroom that I'll show you in a moment. The rest of this overhead space is used for storing cleaning gear, food, kitchen items, and all my electronics I need to be a travel vlogger. So that's the overhead storage here. Over here we have a Jensen stereo. I have a Weeboost so I can pick up cell phone signal. And I also have a little 200 watt inverter in here so I can plug my TV up to it. Originally, my TV was plugged into the regular inverter. There were only three things I needed the inverter to run. My air conditioner, my microwave, and my TV. So I just bought this little inverter so I don't need to turn the inverter on to run my TV. So all I power with my big inverter is my air conditioner, my microwave, and my 110 outlet. So up here is the AC unit. It's a Coleman Mach 10, I think. It's the newest AC unit. It's all digital. You can actually control it from your phone and it's really quiet. It's actually running right now. I'm trying to cool it down here a little bit. It's uh, like 90 degrees in Missouri today. Okay, now let's talk about where I sleep. Those that know me know I love studios. I prefer a studio over a one or two bedroom. It's just what I like. I like everything in one room. So that's why I went with this floor plan. There are actually two floor plans for the Winnebago Travado. There's the G, which is more compartmentalized. And then there's the K, which to me is more like a loft studio type environment. That's what I wanted. I wanted the panoramic views and I wanted everything in one space. So this floor plan really works for me. There are two beds in this coach. I actually took the smaller bed when I first started researching this coach, I thought I was gonna take this bigger bed. I didn't think I'd fit on this bed, but I'm 5'11", I sleep flat on my back, completely stretched out, and this bed is a perfect size for me. I don't hit the cabinets or anything like that, and I just preferred sleeping on this side for whatever reason. Throughout the coach, there are these USB ports everywhere, uh, which is pretty awesome. I showed you the night lights earlier. They're above each one of these beds. Kind of a cool little touch. And these are the anything keepers. You can just throw stuff into these. I added a couple magnets to them to make them stick better. And they're working great for me now. Originally, they were a little bit shaky. Okay, let's check out the other bed. All right, so this is the longer bed. And this is kind of like the entertainment area. Got the TV right here. Uh, it turns in almost every direction. So I can watch it from almost anywhere. If you know what show this is, comment down below. It's an old school show, one of my favorite. I carry the DVDs with me, so when I don't have connectivity, I have something to watch. <laughs> I got the two bed model, so when friends and family visit, I have somewhere for them to stay. So I think this is gonna be a really cool option. Over here are all the controls to all the electronics in the coach. I have an inverter here. I have a one place where I can look at my water pump, my tank levels, my battery levels. I have a power control system where I can see what service I'm using, whether it's 30 amp, 15 amp, 20 amp. I can also see if everything is powered, so that's pretty cool. Uh, these turn the lights on and off. And this is my true Macombi, which is pretty awesome. I can control my heat in the coach, heating my water, 
um, whether I use gas or electric to do that. So it's pretty cool. This is an LP valve on and off switch. There are two of these. There's one outside. And this one is a holding tank heater. So when I'm in really cold weather, I just turn this on and it'll keep my tanks from freezing. Lastly are these windows. I went with the awning style window. A lot of people don't like them because they're acrylic and you can scratch them, but I'm pretty careful. Uh, let me move that TV out of the way a little bit so you can see better. Um, and the cool thing about them is they open like this. So when it's raining, you can open them all the way up and you're not going to get any rain in your coach, but you can still get airflow. You may be asking, what about bugs? There's this bug screen here that comes down. All the windows have this. And then you have this screen, the, the total blackout screen that comes up. So this is really cool. It's called a cassette. So, and then you just close it up. It also has this little feature where you can open it just a little bit. Um, so then you can still get airflow, but your windows are locked. All right, let's move into the bathroom. Okay, so last we have the bathroom here behind these two magnetic doors, which are pretty cool. And when you walk in here, it's like a little shower compartment. So this area is a shower. It has a toilet. It has a drop down sink. It has a faucet. It has a shower head for the shower. It has a shower curtain that you hook up in here. And when you shut the doors, you're in here and the water's only gonna go in here. You have a shower pan down here with a little bamboo thing you stand on. There's also a medicine cabinet in here, which is really cool. And then on this side is a closet. And I have a bunch of clothes in here. And then three different drawers down here. The first drawer is a bunch of bathroom stuff. The second drawer is my socks, my underwear, some beanies for when it gets cold, things like that. And the third drawer is a utility drawer where I keep things like tools. All right, so I have one more thing to show you. The heart and soul of this vehicle, the power management system. So right over here is what makes this coach work. It's the Volta system. All you do is press the button to turn it on and you have um, full 30 amp power just like if you were hooked up to shore power. I mentioned earlier the auto start system a moment ago. So when this falls down to 10%, there's an alternator under the hood and under the hood generator that will automatically start up and run at about 2000 RPMs. And that'll charge this thing up about 40% in an hour. You can actually initiate that charging process before it gets down to 10%, it's called a manual charge. And I'm gonna actually demonstrate that right now. In order to initiate a manual charge or an auto charge for that matter, all you have to do is stick the key in the ignition, um, turn it just slightly to where all the lights come on, and then you hold down this button here until it turns red. Once it turns red, that tells you that the auto start, manual start system is engaged and it's ready to go. Now that this light is red, if my state of charge falls below 10%, like I mentioned earlier, this thing will automatically start itself. But if I wanna run a recharge without waiting for that to happen, I can just go over here and press this button three times. So one, two, three. Boom, it starts itself up. It'll bring itself to a high idle, about 2,000 RPMs, for about an hour, or until the battery is completely charged, or until you're below um, one-fourth of a tank of gas. It's really cool, especially the auto start feature. So if you have pets and you have to leave them in here with the AC on, uh, it gives you peace of mind that it's gonna stay cool in here. The AC is not gonna kill the battery because it'll just auto start itself. And also when you're sleeping, I don't have to worry about getting up to make sure I'm charged if I want to run the AC if I'm somewhere that's hot. So it's a pretty cool feature of this vehicle. All right, so that was my van tour. Comment below the things you liked, the things that you hated. And if you want to follow my adventures in this van, make sure you hit that subscribe button. See you next week.
Jesus. This is going to be fun.